everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we're going to be doing a program that I'm just going to say is all for me. <laughs> it, I realized the other night that I had never done a program featuring my favorite foods. If I had to pick one thing to live off of the rest of my life, it would be this recipe. This is stuffed cabbage. Um, to go alongside that, I'm going to make my favorite dessert, which is Lemon Delight. And then to drink with it, we're going to have one of my favorite, favorite punches, and that's a strawberry punch. So this program is my favorite foods. So we're actually going, I have a pot of water here that I've bought, brought to a boil, and I have a head of cabbage. And what I'm going to do is I cut off the little bottom. I'm going to take a knife. And I'm going to just insert it all the way around this core. What I want are these leaves, and they are very hard, really nearly impossible, to uh, pull off of unless you blanch the cabbage. See, they just don't want to come off. I've washed this. So what I'm going to do is gently, let me, well, we'll just gently drop this in a pot of water for about, oh, I don't know, five or six minutes just to let that cabbage on the outer layers start softening. So while that's doing that, we're going to get started on uh, my favorite dessert, and that is Lemon Delight. I had a friend of mine years ago, uh, Piney Mullins, out of Buchanan County. is the first place that I ever ate this. Uh, was after church one Sunday, Mike and I and his family had gone to um, her house to eat lunch, and she had this, and oh, it, it, just, it just instantly became my favorite. So I'm going to make it today, and I have here, in here I have two cups of just um, pecans, whole pecans. Now, why is my little chopper here? There we go. I'm going to chop these up really fine. Now, I've seen this made with a graham cracker crust, different ways, and, and that's good, but this is my favorite. And this is wonderful. Don't tell me, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how I know this, but it's wonderful with a cup of coffee the next morning for breakfast. <laughs> oh, I just love it. So I want to pulse those nuts until they're fairly... Uh, small. I want to reserve a few to put on top, but I have here in this bowl just a couple of spoons of flour, and I'm going to put most of those two cups of nuts down in there. I want to keep a few for the top. We'll keep about that many. That's probably just a couple of tablespoons or so, and this is one stick of melted butter. And I'm going to stir that together. Now I have here an 8 by 8 inch baking dish that I have sprayed with nonstick spray. And I'm going to press this in the bottom of this pan. And folks, there's one way to do it, and that's with your hands. Clean hands are a tool, a cook's best tool. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. This is the base layer. A lot of people make this, I've come to find out, with um, chocolate and different things, but this is my favorite. I, I love it, absolutely love it. I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes-ish, something like that, and then this needs to cool. So let's bake that for like, 15 minutes and then we will um, take it out and let it cool real real good before we go on with the rest of the recipe oops forgot one ingredient let me get my vanilla you will need some pure vanilla extract now I have here one block Absolutely fine. 
Take your mixer. Now it's very important that this cream cheese be at room temperature because we're gonna mix all this together. Some people put powdered sugar in here. Matter of fact, I think Piney did put powdered sugar in here, but I find that just a little bit too sweet for my taste, so I don't. But if you want to put a little bit of powdered sugar in there, go right ahead. You just want this to be whipped nice and creamy. You will need a um, something to scrape down the sides of your bowl because you want that really incorporated and smooth. So let's get that going. This is delicious. My mouth just waters thinking about it. I made one um, last week at home. I don't make it real often because I eat the whole thing. So I, I don't, I just, I can't have it near me or I'm gonna eat it. It was so good. I had it for dessert one day, one evening with dinner. Then about nine o'clock that night, I realized I wanted another piece. So I had another piece. And then the next morning, well, it was breakfast. Oh, so good. So, so good. Let me get all of this out of here. Now, if you want to, you can clean these. I'm not gonna. Just gonna use them. It's all going to the same place. You can wash them if you want to in between, but let's be real. We're cooking here. We're not gonna do that. I have in this bowl one container or box of, now I use the sugar-free lemon pudding because I'm trying to reduce a little bit of sugar here, but you can use the regular or sugar-free, whichever you prefer. And I have here two cups of milk, but I'm actually, I think I'm only gonna use about a cup and a half or three quarters, so I want it to be a little thicker. This is going on top of that, so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of cream cheese in here. You wanna mix this up with milk. And then you just kinda let that set sure you got all of it mixed up. It'll thicken up as it sets for just a minute. Now we can take these out for good and we will um, let those set while that's baking and then we will, you know, once that cools, when that gets done after about 15 minutes, I'm actually going to pop it in the freezer to, to chill it down quicker because I don't have one made ahead here. I'm going to put these two bowls in the refrigerator until I'm ready for them. I'm going to clean up my mess. The cabbage should be about be ready. When we come back, I'm going to show you what to do with the cabbage, how to make the filling for my favorite food, and then uh, I'll show you how to cook them. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now, our pudding and mixtures are in the refrigerator. Our crust is baking. Let's move on to the cabbage rolls. Now, in this pot, I just have water. And remember, we cut around the edges of the, uh, the core. Well, what you want to do is have a bowl or a plate or something. And we are going to just peel off. And I like to put them upside down so the water kind of drains out of there. This is one of those recipes that honestly, okay, I'm going to have to get that out of there. How can I um, get a bigger fork here? Nope, that's not going to work. Bear with me. Don't try that at home, kids, with the knife. Okay, now. Let that water drain out as much as you can. Be a little easier to work with on the stove top. Okay, see it's blanched and how easy they peel off. You want about, oh, I don't know, eight or 10 uh, leaves of the cabbage. This is, if you can find big cabbage, it works a little bit better the bigger the leaves, but this is fine. My mother 
I don't know where she got the recipe, but this is her recipe. She has made these as far back as I have memory. Um, when I was a little girl, I remember her making them. And I just, oh, it, it just, it's my favorite food. It really is. I would rather have stuffed cabbage than anything. Even, you know, a grilled steak. I'd rather have stuffed cabbage than any food out there. It really is my favorite, favorite food to eat. And um, Mama has made it. I mean, it just, it's just, I don't know where she got the recipe. But I, I just know she made it all my life. Okay, that we'll, we'll start there. Actually, be careful. Put this down in the water just to hold it for just a minute. Um, I, again, I, I don't know where she got the recipe, but I just know she's made it all. She made it, you know, just all my life. I remember her making it. You will need a couple of pounds of ground beef some salt, about a teaspoon or so, and some pepper. Um, you will need one egg that you can put in the bowl. That kind of acts as a binder. And then Mama just used instant rice, which is what I'm going to do. Just one bag. I have the bowl in the bag. Probably about a three-fourths of a cup or so of just... Um, dry rice, uncooked rice, plain rice. Now, you will need, I'm actually, now you can cook this on the stove in a pot. You can cook it in your instant pot. You can put it in a, a oven proof baking dish and do it in the oven, or you can do it in the slow cooker, which this takes some time to cook, so I like to do it in my slow cooker. Now, Mama always put some sauerkraut in the bottom of hers, if I can get that open. Hmm. My camera assistant needs to come here and help me with this because I can't open it. I have, don't have a lot of strength in my hands at times. Here you go. Camera operator would be my son. <laughs> he helps me. Aaron. Uh-oh. Uh I got to get leverage here. Got to get some leverage, he says on there isn't it oh yeah is it not coming i'm determined okay he's determined to get it bear with us folks let me find a i don't know where my little gripper is here's a little gripper maybe that I <coughs> it's too tight it's too tight there we go i knew he could get it i would have never got that thank you now mama back to our story Mama always put some sauerkraut in the bottom. And it's a funny story to me. might not be to you, but to me it is. When I was a little girl, I just, you know, kids are funny. I would never eat the sauerkraut. And she would have to make me a bowl, a pot, with no sauerkraut in the bottom. And then about half of this jar. Mama always just used a can, but this is what my grocery store had, so... That will be saved for another use. I use sauerkraut a lot. So about half, juice included. One day, I was a teenager, and I came home, and it was on the stove, and I, you know, it's, I just got some out, and I ate it, and I was like, oh, mama, those are the best cabbage rolls you've ever made. And she laughed, and she said, you got the one that had the sauerkraut in it. From that day on, she never had to make a pot without sauerkraut again. Hands, get in there, mix that all together. Mama would always get tickled at me because I, I love cabbage, absolutely love cabbage. And she would always put some extra cabbage on the top and I would eat the cabbage long before the cabbage rolls were done. And I still do that to this day, okay? now. Clean hands, need a board because I don't want the potential for the meat to get on my board. Take one of your leaves, okay, one, all right, 
Some people cut the core out. I, I don't. But you want about this much, I don't know, half a cup maybe. You can really use as much or as little as you want. Then you want to start at the bottom, roll it up, turn the leaves in on it. It's okay if that happens. It, it doesn't matter. And then place them in the bottom of your slow cooker, seam side down. You do want to make sure that your meat mixture is evenly divided, okay? Again, roll it once, fold in the sides, and then finish rolling it. And you want this side to be down, and that kind of holds it together. Oh, mouth water. I love this so much. If you have never had stuffed cabbage, I actually think the origins of this are Polish, maybe, or Ukrainian over, you know, in the Baltic areas. I'm not sure. All I know is it's delicious. That's all I know. Okay. You just want to do this a few, you know, till you use up your meat mixture. I've made the unstuffed cabbage before on the program because it's quicker. And I make that, you know, at home some, but this is just the, this is just, I don't know. It's just memories for me, but it's also, it's really good. And it's hearty, it's not expensive. And it's one of those things that you can eat, um, you know, make the pot and you can, um, you know, eat on it for several days it lasts that long I love it you know the next day I will just take it out and put it on a plate and heat it up and oh it's so delicious I love it absolutely love this dish in case you can't tell that all right I am just going to keep rolling these and putting them in here we're going to come back we're going to check our crust and I'll show you how to finish these off and then we will make a quick little punch I'll be back in just a minute Alrighty, I took the crust out of the oven, popped it in the freezer so it can cool down. This is the rest of the head of the cabbage that we boiled. And I had a couple of extra leaves. What I do, and what my mama did, was take the extra cabbage and just place on top of the rolls. And I'm going to just cut this up into bite-sized pieces. I love this. Usually by now I've nibbled on three or four pieces of that. Mm. Okay. And I'm going to cook this in the slow cooker. You can cook it on low all day or you can cook it on high. Um, about probably four or five hours on high, six to eight hours on low. Or if you want to cook it on the stove top, um, then you will need to, you know, make sure that you start it out on a higher temperature to bring it up to a simmer and then turn it down on medium low for about two and a half to three hours on the stove top. So that's why I cook it in the crock pot. And sometimes I make a double batch and have two crock pots going because it will last two or three days and you've got, you know, you've got it, it it's done. It's, it's a process to make, so why not make it? You could totally freeze the rolls and then heat them up after they're cooked. 
what you will need is, now mom and I use our home canned tomatoes, but I don't have any here. So I have two cans of just, I like the whole plum tomatoes. And what I'm doing is just going in and squishing them with my fingers because I like that irregular shape. I have two of the big cans, the, what are they, 28 ounces, whatever the big cans are, or you would need four smaller cans. And I just, I like the whole tomatoes. If you only have diced, you know, you can use that. If you have home canned, it's even better, okay? All right, we're gonna just squash all of these up. I just squished those up with my hands. Now I'm going to pour them right on top of the pot. I'm going to make sure that there's some in the bottom just by going in the side. Don't stir it. Just go in the side and kind of press to let some of that liquid down into the bottom. Cover it. That's it. I'm going to, set, I'm going to cook it on high for about five hours and we're gonna have a delicious delicious meal now I'll tell you what let's move this I'll plug it up just a second I got to get it out of my way we'll just plug it up over here how about that okay all right now in this blender I have one bag of whole frozen strawberries that I have just blitz just pureed them in my blender Okay, one bag. I have here one can of frozen lemonade that's thawed. I'm gonna pour the strawberries in there. Oh, this is so good, especially in the summertime when you got, you know, it's hot. About a fourth of a cup of sugar. You can use sugar substitute. And then I'm using strawberry flavored uh, sparkling water but you can use whatever kind of sparkling water you like or just water it's fine I'm gonna put three cans of water stir it up chill it it's delicious again I'm just using I'm using strawberry flavored water because I'm making strawberry lemonades what I'm making like a strawberry punch type thing take a whisk Go down in there, stir it together, and you have got an incredible, incredible strawberry lemonade that, again, this program is about my favorite foods. So this is one of my favorite drinks, cold drinks, that there is. So there's a quick little strawberry lemonade. Right. Now, I took the crust out of the uh, cooler, and all I did was spread the um, cream cheese mixture that we made as layer one. Now, I'm going to take the pudding that we made, and I'm going to make this layer two. Again, lemon is my favorite, but you could use whatever flavor pudding is your favorite. Me, I like lemon. This is easy. It's just, you just got to get it together. Spread that out. You don't have to have a different spatula. Just use the same one. This is a little offset spatula, which I find very helpful with things. Okay. Now, 
the remaining uh, half of the Cool Whip whipped topping. Again, if you want to make your own whipped cream, you can. I think it's pretty to do it in a little glass dish because it shows off the layers, but you don't have to do that. Okay, now, just spread that out. Sometimes I like to leave a little bit of the border of the yellow. I just think it looks pretty. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And remember when we put the nuts in, we um, saved a few? Well, that's what this is. And I like to just put a few of the nuts on top. I use pecans, but you could use walnuts or almonds or any kind of a nut that you wanted to. But And there you go. That is my favorite dessert. So this meal is my favorite foods. If I could pick anything at all to eat, this would be what I would pick. My mama's stuffed cabbage rolls, my wonderful uh, strawberry lemonade, and lemon delight. Oh, so good. Now, I do want to show you the cabbage. What I like to do is just cut it. You know, this is so tender because it's cooked in the crock pot. I like to cut it up, get the meat exposed. And for me, I like pepper on mine. I like extra pepper, as you know. I'm a pepper fanatic. But I like a little bit of freshly ground pepper on my meat mixture. And there you go. There are my favorite dishes, period. My mama's stuffed cabbage delicious. Make sure when you're dipping it out of your crock pot that you get down in the bottom to get some of that sauerkraut. Remember we put the bottom layer sauerkraut. You want to get that in there because that blends with it and it's just incredible. An easy peasy lemon delight with a nut crust. You could do this with a graham cracker crust too if you wanted and it is good but I prefer the nut. So we're doing my favorite things. And then strawberry lemonade. And this is wonderful. And if you wanted to take, you know, put it over ice and then put all of this back in the blender and blitz it to make like a slushy type, oh, it's so, so good. You can totally do that too. So there you go. My favorite recipes. Try them and let me know what you think. And I will see you next time on Everyday Mama. Thank you.